Hello everyone, I'm, I'm John Rowe and I'm talking to you from the World Poetry Cafe and uh, I'm doing a lot of poems, I do in schools and I do on festival fields and I'm going to do one first about what I do which is words, words, words are everywhere aren't they? Words are wonderful things. Words are magic. If I say stand up, you'll all probably stand Stand up. There you are, you all stood up. If I say sit down, sit down. I'm not even in the same room as you. Words can make it all sorts of things. So this poem's called Words. Words for the story, words for the play, words for the night and words for the day, words for the letter and words from rhyme, words rolling round the tongue time after time, words from the ocean, words from the sea, words from the lakeside, words from the free, words from the centre and words from the edge, words from the traveller and words from the hedge, words from the wagon and words from the tent, words from the rich man when his money's all spent, words in the papers, words in the book. Words in the kitchen, everywhere you look. Words in the leaflet, words in the post. Words through the stick of rock they sell on the coast. Words on the notice, words on the wall. Words on the tongues of the teachers at school. Words on the bottle, words on the jar. Words on the bus and words on the car. Words on the lorry and words on the train. Words on the bicycle, words on the plane. Words on the fishing boat, words on the ship. Words on the t-shirt, words on the strip, words on the pitch and words on the crease, words on the war and words on the peace, words on the subject, words on the news, words on the crime and words on the clues. Words that send a shiver, words that send a shout, words that send a message that everybody's out, words that send some happiness, words that send some hope. Words that send the very thing you need for you to cope. Words that make you angry. Words that make you mad. Words that make you good and words that make you bad. Words that make you hot and words that make you cool. Words that make your best friend act like a fool. Words you need to sign. Words you need to write. Words you need to speak that need to be polite. Words you need to process. Words you need to read. Words you need to check. And words you need to lead. Words you need to follow or walk side by side. Words you need to run and words you need to ride. Words in the... Silence. Words in your head. Words you are hiding that need to be said. I, we're getting into a little technology here, and I have forgotten to set my timer, which I'm going to do right now, and I'll assume that I've just done, ding, 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 that was pretty, wasn't it? And uh, I'm assume I've done a couple of minutes. You know, it's like when I'm in the classroom and I've forgotten to ask the teacher how long I've got before you all have to go away. And so here we are. Here we are. Now I'm going to I am going to time and I'm going to start. Perfect. Fantastic. Well, actually talking of classrooms, I've I'm going right to I'm going to think about being with reception. And you know, if you ask, and every teacher will know this, and you'll remember from when you were in, were in reception, if a teacher says, ask a question, probably as a reply they'll get, did you know? Did you know? So I've just pretended I'm in reception again. Did you know? You can all shout this out when I go. Is that, when I point, you can shout, did you know? One, two, three. Did you know my best friend has been all the way to Mars? Did you know my, bro my sister broke my mum's favourite vase? Did you know my cousin is over four metres tall? Did you know my puppy dog juggles with a ball? Did you know my, that last night I had ice cream for my tea? Did you know my kitten likes to play with me? Did you know last Saturday 
We all went to the zoo. Did you know that everything I say is absolutely true? Of course, when you come to school, there's a whole new language to learn. You know, before, before you go to school, you know the important things like, I'm hungry, and I want. But when you get there, you have to hear projects, topics, all sorts of words you didn't know before. This is called school projects. Imagining you've just heard the word. Miss, what's a project? Can you hang it on the wall? Can you take it home and eat it? Miss, can we do it in assembly? Miss, my sister did a project once and she had to bring lots of empty washing up liquid bottles and yoghurt cartons. Miss, what shall we bring? Can I bring my pet hamster? Miss, my auntie drives a big lorry. Can I do my project on that? Miss, Lorraine says, her mum says, her doctor says, she's not allowed to do projects. Miss, is it true? Projects give you spots. And then there's the whole one-upmanship, isn't there? You've always, someone, someone's always got something better than you. So, I'm not sure if this is about gerbils or boasting. You make your own mind up. I bet my gerbil isn't as clever as... I'm going to start that again. I bet your gerbil isn't as clever as my gerbil. My gerbil walks backwards. That's nothing. Mine walks backwards and sideways. Yeah, but mine walks backwards, sideways, and lays on its back with its legs sticking up. So what? Mine does all that, and it talks. You think that's clever? Mine can count up to a thousand. My gerbil's got the biggest stamp collection in the world. My gerbil drives a bus. My gerbil's an astronaut. My gerbil can eat 25 baked potatoes and still not be sick. My gerbil paints pictures of the moon. It says it's been there, but I'm not sure. Sometimes I think gerbils tell lies. While we're on animals, I was, uh, I was, I was in, in Brunei, I think, with Nick Toxak, and there was, uh, who's very important to the World Poetry Cafe. He, he kind of runs it. He's a big boss. He'd hate to be called a boss. He is a big boss. He's not the biggest boss, but he is a big boss. So, I was, uh, we were in Brunei, and there was a plague of crocodiles. And, uh, well, a plague, there was lots of them. There were plop, crop, crocodile traps on the golf course, and and I thought, well, I've never seen a live crocodile. I, I, I went down the beach to see if I could see one. I'm really glad I didn't, because I didn't know that, but crocodiles can run really fast. They can run faster than a person. All I saw was a huge lizard. But it gave me this poem called My Friend the Crocodile. There's a crocodile in my soup. I'm not sure that I mind. It's only eating mosquitoes, not biting my behind. It's quite a friendly crocodile <coughs> and seems to be polite. I'm sure when I have company, it will keep right out of sight. I'd like to take it home with me, but this would be misunderstood. I'd be accused of wildlife smuggling and they'd lock me up for good. My crocodile might defend me and tell the court its own version. Of, two, of a story of two friends abroad, involving no coercion. On reflection, when I've sucked my soup, I'll set my crocodile free. I'll friend it first on Facebook, then watch it waddle to the sea.
I think I'll do another animal poem. I was, uh, I was going into school once and they, uh, they said, uh, could I do something on Africa? I thought, well, I really don't know a lot about Africa. You know, you should ask someone from Africa if you want to know about Africa. Not an Essex boy. So I thought, well, what do people know about Africa? Everyone knows about the animals. But they get the animals wrong sometimes. So I'm calling this, do they come from Africa? And there's the, you can shout out the last word with me. So when I point again, you'll shout, Africa! One, two, three. Stripy tigers, they don't come from Africa. Stripy zebras live in herds in Africa. Long neck camels walk across the north and horn of Africa. Long neck giraffes roam in the grasslands, savannas, and open woodlands of Africa. Long nosed anteaters cannot be found in Africa. Long nosed elephants wave their trunks in Africa. Two horn rhinos live way down south in Africa. One horn rhinos live in India. Not in Africa. Big mouth crocodiles swim in rivers all over Africa. Big mouth alligators are not seen in Africa. Spotty leopards go hunting in sub Saharan Africa. Spotty roe deer fawns would not do well in Africa. Prickly hedgehogs are very small in Africa. Prickly porcupines weigh over 25 kilograms in Africa roaring gorillas live in forests to the east and west of Africa. Roaring lions live in prides in Africa. Whoa. Well, sometimes when you're writing, something happens and it gives you a poem. Now, a few years ago, I was in hospital. Can I have an R? Ah, uh, and I had pneumonia, and I got put in the general ward, and. They, uh, and there was someone in there who thought there was a spaceship on the roof. Now, I, 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 I was in the middle of a tour around schools, three weeks of travelling around schools. So I rang my agent and I said, uh, I said, I'm in hospital, but don't get a rep of debt for, to get someone else ready to go into a school tomorrow. But... Uh, actually, I'll, um, don't send them until, because the doctors might let me out. Well, they didn't let me out that day, they let me out the next, but I did tell her about the man who thought there was a spaceship on the roof of the hospital. She said, when are you going to write about it? I thought, well, I can't actually write a fun, funny poem about hospitals. You know, you mustn't make fun of people in hospitals but you can about schools. So I put the spaceship on the roof of a school. Miss, there's a spaceship on the roof. Don't be silly, Alex, sit down. But miss, there is a spaceship on the roof. I told you not to be so stupid. Sit down right now. The whole class was rising and running towards the window with oohs and ahs and we don't believe it. Miss remained steadfast in the corner, arms folded. All of you sit down this very second. Just then there was a knock on the ceiling and a hole appeared, not with a cracking of plaster but more like melting plastic except there were no drips to burn the skin and through it came the strangest being you have ever seen. Green, obviously with a large round head 
and spindly arms and legs. Wow, a real live alien. It walked up to Alex, the smallest boy in the class, and spoke in the politest of voices. A good morning. You're obviously in charge here. My family are moving into the area and I wondered if I could enrol my children in this school. You all gave me such an enthusiastic welcome. But tell me, are there many disruptive children here, like the one in the corner? Oh no, she's just feeling left out. She's twice our size and doesn't join in much. There's one or two in every class, but we try not to let them spoil our fun. Thank you so very much. We shall be seeing you soon. The alien left, the way to come in, the hole closed, and life was never quite the same again. Yeah, you know, the problem we're doing like this, that's it, that's it. When I know what I'm doing now. With no clock up on the wall, it's very difficult. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I think I'll do a relatively disgusting poem called I Don't Mind. I don't mind the fur in the bottom of the cup that got left, left in the bedroom and was never washed up and I don't mind the way me old trainers stink or the toothpaste that's dried on the side of the stink and I don't mind the smell of garlic and onions or the way that me granddad picks at his bunions and I don't mind being bitten by fleas from the cat or finding I'm wet from somewhere I've sat. And I don't mind my sister scratching her belly or picking her nose while she watches the telly. And I don't mind the presence from the old dog next door or the way that me mum always belches and snores when she sits in her chair and she falls fast asleep. And I don't mind the bundles of old tights she keeps to stuff into cushions one of these days. And I don't mind the way that my young brother plays with worms and spiders he says for his pets, but I do mind something I've not mentioned yet. There's one thing that really does make me sick, and that is the way that chewing gum sticks to your hair, to your clothes and the soles of your shoes, and you're covered in something that someone else chewed. So I'll get rid of mine with a great deal of care, right in the middle of my class teacher's chair. Okay, who's always late with their homework? Who comes up with pathetic excuses? Me. And does your teacher ever believe you when you tell the truth about why you're late? No, they don't. So this is called The Dog Ate My Homework. The dog ate my homework. My granny shrunk my PE kit. My brother stole my timetable and my teacher doesn't believe a word of it. He says I'm lazy, I drive him crazy, threatens me with punishments I can't even understand, sends me to the office with a report card in my hand, talks about detention and then about exclusion, tells me I must be suffering from some kind of delusion. Maybe I should avoid the truth. Let my imagination play. See how good I am at lying. I'll practice every day. I'll log every flying saucer that navigates my mind. I'll go into every search engine to see what I can find. I'll develop such a knowledge of everything obscure that I either have to reward me or send me for a cure. But the dog has still eaten my homework and my granny has still shrunk my PE kit and my brother has still stolen my timetable, and my teacher still doesn't believe a word of it. One of the most difficult things about writing, and I tell you what, you are the writers. Writers like me, we can, uh, we can write when we feel like it, but most of you, even when you're at home during the term because of all this stuff that's going on now and you're having to do stuff on the internet, you have to write every day so you are the real writers. And what is the worst thing? Staring at the dreaded blank page. You look at it. 
and you're thinking, what can I write on that? And sometimes it's just a matter of getting the first word down. Or sometimes you just get an idea that you didn't expect to come. For instance, I had to write a poem once that both children and adults could join in on, because I always get people shouting. Now, it's one thing getting children to join in, but adults are a totally different matter. They're very strange. If you're somewhere and people and there's someone at the front asks for volunteers, they're pushing you forward, say, go forward, put your hand up, put your hand up. When it's their turn, they sit like statues. So I had to make it very simple. And I was sitting there, I had the dreaded bank blank page in front of me. I had the pen in my hand. It was hovering above the page. And I'd done everything. I'd, uh, I'd procrastinated, which is actually a word for not getting on with it. I, I, I'd fed the goldfish. I'd, I'd made a cup of tea. I, I did all those things. And then I sat and I concentrated. I could feel a poem coming in on runway number 10. And just then, the door burst open and my daughter went, Hey, Dad! I could have picked her up and made a daughter-sized wall in a hole in the wall. But it looked really bad in the papers the next day. Poet makes daughter too dimensional. So I wrote this poem instead. It's called Hey Mum. And you can shout out. When I point to the ceiling, you shout, Hey Mum. And when I point to the floor, you shout, I, Hey Dad. And you're going to start. One, two, three. Didn't hear you. Try that again. One, two, three. Bit better, not quite loud enough. Let's go one more time. One, two, three. Hey, Mum, it's a brand new day. Hey, Mum, can I go out and play? Hey, Mum, have you seen my ball, my skipping rope, my pleasure machine? So I'll find it in a minute or I'll do it when I've done. Who are you going to play with? And make sure you're back by one. Your dinner will be ready or we're going out for tea. That's the last clean shirt you're wearing, so make sure you keep it clean or it's... Hey, Dad. Can I have 50p? Hey, Dad. You promised me. Hey, Dad, will you take me down to get some new training shoes? There's smashing ones in town. It's, I've only got a pound coin or I'll do it when there's time. I talk it over with your mum and if she says it's fine, we'll go and get them next weekend. It's only one more week or I think that you've already got enough shoes for your feet. Then it's, hey, mum, it's not fair. Hey, mum, it's cruel. Hey, mum, they're all wearing new training shoes at school and, hey, Dad, I told mum. Hey, Dad, you said, hey, Dad, you know you've lost, so stop moaning and go and get the car, will you? About five or six minutes left. So I've got time to do a couple more family ones. This is about your parents buying you clothes and you not being with them. My boy was 40 years old yesterday, but he was quite, he was about 12, 13, or 12 or 13 when I wrote this, and he still hates this poem. I know exactly what happened. He'd been asking for a sweatshirt, a charity thing, and we bought him one. And it was the wrong colour. It's always like that, isn't it? You know, we parents think you're going to be really pleased with what we buy you. And you look at it, we've got that big parent smile on our faces. You're going to be so pleased with us. And you pick it up and you go, Ugh! I didn't want a red one, I wanted a blue and I wanted, I wanted a white one now. Okay, now I'm going to start that again. I didn't want a red one. I didn't want a blue. I wanted a white one. And I hate you now. Look here, half pint. Can't we ever get it right? Can't you at least say, thank you very much, Mum, and try to be polite? Because whatever we buy you, it never seems to please. It's either the wrong colour or it's baggy at the knees. It's not the, got, got the real, right label or it's entirely the wrong brand. Well, I'll tell you this for nothing. It's more than we can stand. But, 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 no one ever asked me what it is I want to wear. And it is my body after all. And, well, it isn't fair. I've had enough. I'll hear no more. 
put this argument on hold because until you're bringing pound coins in, you'll do as you're told. And don't you pull that face at me when you know you really should be saying that you're sorry and crying will do no good. But Dad, you never listen. And all you do is shout. And why do you always get at me and when are oh, you going out? Whoa. Well, I'm going to go one more, I think. It's about football. I think I'm going to, I'm going to actually finish on two little ones. One about brothers. Who's got a brother? Who's got a little brother, even worse? Yeah. And, you know... When babies are first born, they, they crawl around. They put everything in their mouths. Well, this is about one little brother who did just that. My little brother, right little Herbert, nearly choked himself on sherbet. My little brother, ever so sweet, but you should see the things he eats. Lumps of coal, bits of soap, plastic bricks and ends of rope, dirt and grass and sticks and stones, even tried an old dog's bone. My little brother will eat anything at all, but will he eat Brussels sprouts when he gets to school? Now, everyone does football poems, and I thought I ought to do a football poem, but I'm really no good at football. In fact, I'm one of those people who's not good at sports at all. In fact, when people were choosing sides, I would be the last person they chose. And did they put me somewhere home harmless? No, they always put me in goal. Now, if you're in goal, you tend to freeze to death and you tend to just watch everyone else running around the field having fun. Unless you're really keen on being a goal. And, uh, you know, and they could make mistakes. They could miss when they shoot. But if you miss, you are the real villain of the piece. You are, they get at you. Why do you let that in? Why do you, can't you see? Are you blind? Well, so I thought I'd write about being the worst person at sport called choosing sides. I love a game of football, but was, what does make me sick is when the sides are chosen, I'm the last one that they pick. They never do give me a chance to demonstrate my skill, because when everybody's running round, they give me a goal to fill, and that's not my position. I should be on the wing, and I know it won't do it any good if I say anything, so I think about the tackles and the goals I could have scored while I watch the others miss them as I get cold and bored. But I am not allowed mistakes. There's never any doubt. It doesn't matter what I say. It's what I miss. They talk about. And talking of missing, I know you're all missing your friends at the moment. So, take your exercise. Talk to them on Facebook. Talk to them on your tablets, on WhatsApp and everything else. But... Just be patient. All this will be over one day. In the meantime, I hope to see you sometime in your own schools. This is John Rowe, and I'm saying goodbye. See you later.